not one goblin out here. The crows are harassing a hawk. They really they got so much racket going up, I can hardly hear him gobble. <coughs> but he's gobbling at them crows every now and then. There's a bunch of hens out there too. I know it's two or three of them. I heard them yelping and clucking. And uh, I got here a little before fly down time. I had to work last night. And, uh, but anyway, he's out there. This hunt will probably take a little more patience. I can't move on him anymore. He's kind of got me pinned. It's a small area. I got you, sucker. Boy, another, another decoyless hunt. Right here in the same spot where I had that decoyless hunt last year. And uh, I'm about oh, 75 yards from where I killed that one last year. I got another one. Pretty nice ho hooks. Real nice beard. And uh, I'm just not stoning them. I'm, just, I'm hitting them. <laughs> I'm kind of gut shooting them. And I'm getting them legs. I mean, he, he was drooping a leg, but he got airborne. And he went, and I seen him, he didn't get very high. He, he was struggling to get airborne. And I peeped out the window, and I just immediately cut the camera off and dashed his way and went up and uh, got up on the pond down. And I seen him laying over there on the other side of the pond. And on the way to there, I wasn't sure. I thought it could be a black stump. And uh, sound like a, a, a big gobbler or hen or something got out of a tree and flew. I thought, oh my goodness, maybe my, my turkey. That was my turkey, and you know, and it sounded like he flew a long ways. And uh, I was a little nervous. I said, well, let me go check that black blob that I saw there that looked like a turkey. And uh, I was expecting it to be a stump, to be honest. I thought whatever I heard fly off was my turkey, and it was just going to be you know, a bad deal. And I went around there and sure enough, that black blob was my turkey and that was a different turkey that flew out of a tree, which I'm glad. Sounded like a gobbler too. But uh, I heard another gobbler way, way off over there gobbling, but that couldn't have been him. Boy, this was nice, nice. Pull the camera around, show the set up. You know, I don't know if I caught that one on video. He'd hung around so far to this side. I thought I could pan around to that side enough to to get him to where I shot him. But uh, it's kind of iffy. He may have been off camera a little bit. But uh, I heard this bird off the nights. I got here about oh, 15 minutes before fly down. And uh, he was gobbling on one side of my property. Heard some hens cutting on the other side of the property, just small property. And uh, I didn't, it kind of handcuffed me where I couldn't move in too close to the, to the tom where I wanted to be because I would have spooked the hens. So I just had to flank to the side, have the hens over here and the tom down here. And he was a long ways, but I knew he had to come back this way. And I uh, set up and them darn crows got, they were harassing the hawk. And the hawk got to squawking in the crows and the more crows come and end up what sounded like, you know, 75 or 80 crows. And I couldn't hear the turkey gobble. It was just right, right in my ear. And uh, finally they calmed down and I heard a tom gobble way off. And, uh, and then this tom gobbled and I got to yelping real aggressive. I got to, and I, I didn't capture any of that on video, but uh, 
when I yelped that first time on video, he didn't answer me. But at, a little later on, I got to call him with more aggressive yelps and every now and then throw a cut in there. And he got to answer me and he got to getting closer and he got he got interested. I call this turkey up, you know. It's, some birds are, are, you know, more of a, a, a ambush you call, but you just happen to be where he wants to go. This one, I called him out of a place he wanted to be, over into a place he probably really didn't want to be and uh and killed him so it was a good call and kill just uh made a you know hair of a poor shot i just i can't wait this probably be my last decoyless kill this year i got one more morning in the morning that i'm going uh and i won't won't uh won't have decoys and then uh i'll probably head to mississippi tomorrow evening and use decoys up until uh, the fourth when our season the decoys get legal for our season and I come back over here and start hunting a little bit and then go to George and Tennessee but uh, I'm real real tickled this is a uh, number 189 I'm getting close to, no 289 I'm getting closer to 300 and uh, it's starting to starting to look in the grass anyway it's gonna be special Tim Knight just killed his hundredth one yesterday and I remember my hundredth one very special birds and uh but they're all they're all hard in their own way but this one this one was what you know it's tough when you when you can't have a decoy out to distract them and they just coming in looking but that's the setup i just kind of added some more paint to this blind to break up the outlines that really adding that dark paint right up through the holes it really breaks up the blind into pieces and uh, and helps. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna get this one. <coughs> I gotta go over here and find my arrow. My arrow's up right through him. There's a ton of feathers over there I need to pick up. See how long of a shot this was. I was sitting back in the blind a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, ten, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Seventeen yard shot to the first feathers. There's feathers strode everywhere. There's my arrow. That brought the pretty good. Got a little bit of blood on it. Shot him with feathers. It's just obviously good solid gut shot. I'm going to get these feathers up. Now sometimes I think another turkey comes and he sees feathers on the ground like that. He, uh, he kind of gets spooked. I know crows will. So I need to pick all these up and then I'll pack out. It's nice when you can drive right to your setup. <laughs> But anyway, I wanted to make a point about this broadhead that I shoot. Like I said, it's been discontinued, but uh, it's pretty much a one and done head because they're all so flimsy. But what I like about them is they are tough enough on the weak, on the, the shots where you hit a softer spot like guts when you hit way back. There's not a lot of bone structure back there once you get behind the thighs. And that's where his intestines and his uh, gizzard and all that is well because it's not much bone structure the broadhead stays big i mean this head is as big as it ever was right there it hadn't collapsed but maybe a tiny bit and it stayed huge had it hit up front where the heavy bone structure lies it might have sheared off one or two of these blades but good thing about hitting you know in that area that's the vitals it don't take but one blade to really do a lot of damage because this this head right here with one blade bigger than most broad heads with with all of theirs but uh anyway i hate they're discontinued or probably the best turkey head made i think it could be something better made and uh maybe all us turkey guys need to to get together and get on that uh tim knight's got an excellent design it's just uh I think it could be a little bit bigger for uh, for the purpose of doing a lot more damage. But anyway, I'm gonna get out of here, get my blind up, taken down, and 
and I head home.